Rulon, first of all, I'm, I'm curious, what got you interested in the sport of wrestling when you were a youngster? What got you hooked? Well, when I was a kid growing up, for me, I grew up on a dairy farm, and so I had eight brothers and sisters. I was the youngest of the nine. And seeing all them be able to do sports, it made me want to get off the farm. So at a five-year-old, I remember the first time I walked in and wrestled, and that was some of these kids' age. I walked in and wrestled. I got my butt kicked by my brother that was a year older, but I went in and I had fun and I learned how to wrestle. Everybody reflects on your 2000 Olympic gold medal, that Titanic match against Alexander Karelin. He was undefeated for 13 years and you took him down. What gave you the confidence going into that match that you could get it done? Well, it, there's a lot of things, you know, you know the confidence. And, and for me, it was more the opportunity because months before the match, you know, I'd made the Olympic team and I was feeling pretty confident. And I walked out there and I got thrown by the number two Russian and pinned a month before the Olympics. So for me, one thing is, is, you know, you're always going to lose in life. You're always going to get knocked down. You got to get back up. You got to refocus every day. And so for me, I went out there and I finally got to the Olympics and I won my previous four matches. I, I came, I was losing my semifinal match, two nothing, came back to wrestle Corellin in the finals. And here I am against the guy that three years previously broke my neck in two places. So when I came out and walked out with him, I realized I had an opportunity and you know, you never, you know, there's, you're never going to be here again. So you know what, you walk out there and you let the world know that, you know, those three letters on the back of that singlet, USA, mean the world to you. And for me, that was just a blessing to be able to walk out there. And that's probably what gave me the confidence knowing where I grew up on the farm in Wyoming and, you know, people never expected me to do what I was doing. So nobody expected me to win the Olympics, probably first of all, me. But I just said to myself, you're never going to go out in life and give halfway. You're going to give 100%. And if you win, lose, or draw, know that you gave 100%. That's all you can ask. Do you ever talk to Corellin, or have you spoken with him since that match? Yeah, I saw him. Uh, I saw him at the you know the the pre you know the the last few Olympics. You know, I'll go there and I'll see him at the Olympics, and we'll talk. He's you know he's in the Russian Federation. He's like the leader of all wrestling in Russia because now he's more of a diplomat and he's a guy that you know you you walk in the room people still look at him and like oh my gosh you know Corellin's you know five inches taller than me he walks in the building you know he's there and, and I had a chance to interview him and we had a really nice conversation and we talked about when I beat him and he's very funny very smart very bright he speaks six languages so I learned a lot from him, but then also what it's like to be a champion. And as I stood behind him right after I beat him, I said, you'll always be the best because, you know, you're a true champion and you're dominating, you're powerful, but you're also a, a good human being who respect other people. Because they always walk up, they shake your hand, they look you in the eye, just to know as a wrestler to wrestler, we are all the same, even though he's been dominant, you still respect each other. You talked about getting knocked down. You've had a lot of highs and a lot of lows, a lot of lows off the wrestling match. You've been in some terrible accidents on a snowmobile, a motorcycle, I believe, a light aircraft. You survived them all where, where they were critical accidents. How much did your wrestling drive, that never give up mentality the champion wrestlers have, how much did that help you through those difficult times? Well, there was something we learned on the farm. You know, every day you're going to get a scrape, a scratch, a a cut or something on the farm because I remember eight years old I was with my sisters we were going to turn the water off I had a brother that passed away that year and I fell out my sister was driving and I was 12 years old or I was eight and she, the 13 year old's driving down in the street and you know she grabbed the steering wheel and yanked it I fell out of the back of the truck and so for me as a young child you know life is adversity and challenges and you know growing up you know when I, when I started school they realized I had a learning disability that you know I wasn't as is as, as, you know quick as the other kids at, at, at schooling and I wasn't as talented I didn't have the same skill level and for me it just always life throws you adversity and so I think kind of where we're at in America nowadays you know it's not perfect it's not what we think of it but you know what you have to do the best with what you've been given and that's one thing that drove me to become the person I was to win the Olympics and then after I win the Olympics you know it's like oh guess what you, you succeeded but guess what there's going to be failures you're going to be knocked downs and that's the way I've looked at life you know I do insurance, I do, I do real estate, I have so many things now that people are like, you're such a person, you, you've achieved so many things, you know, why don't you just relax and just be a simple wrestling coach? I'm like, you know, I, I live in this great country and, and every day is a, is a day to re, you know, regrow yourself and reborn, you know, you wake up and after that night in the wilderness, I spent 18 hours at negative 25 below zero, every day I see that sun come up. I have a true gift of, you know, that God has given me to be on this earth. And so I appreciate it. And why not maximize our potential? 
You were great here talking to the kids tonight. You have a gift for that. How often do you do this type of a thing, and what's your biggest message you want to leave with the kids? Well, um, last week I was actually in Colorado. I was training. I got some cuts on my neck. I'm you know, out there working with the younger generation of wrestlers to try to help inspire them to become the next Olympic champions. And tonight, you know, I have a club. I'm actually missing my club in Utah by being here and working with these great kids. And so for me, you walk out there and you see kids, you see that, that light in their eyes, that, that happiness, that like, you know, thought of maybe someday I, be, I can become an Olympic champion. I remember be, being a kid in high school and seeing a kid that was just wrestling at a small college and being like, wow. Well, he's, he has the knowledge to wrestle in college, and I catch myself all the time. It's you just don't think about where you go in life, and you know to, to sit back and look at myself now as a kid, I'm, I'm blown away because I never thought I was anything special. I just kept working, and so to be able to walk out there and making a profound impact in their lives, you know, why is there not wrestlers? in this gym today, why is there not the next Olympic champion coming here out of Illinois? Because if I could do it, I believe every one of these kids can do it.